Good morning, everyone. It's Matthew Soper here at Hampshire Carnivorous Plants. And um, a question we're asked a lot at this time of year, we've been asked quite a few times already this year, is how do I overwinter my Venus flytrap or what to do with them over the winter months? Um, if you've been growing them indoors in a kitchen windowsill or a, you know east or west facing windowsill and you're wondering what to do with them now, well, I'll show you. So if you look at these here, these are some var plants with a range of different varieties. This is when people panic because they start to die and they look terrible, especially this one. Can you see this one here? This one looks really sad and poorly. Don't panic. This is quite normal. They, uh, they naturally do this every year. They're like herbaceous perennials, so they die back over winter. There aren't any flies about for them, so there's no need for them to grow these elaborate traps. So what they'll do, they'll rest as a bowl underground when it's nice and cold, the next spring, around about beginning of March, towards the end of March, they'll start to come back into life. If you grow them in a cold greenhouse, we find they come up a bit earlier than that. They start to come up around about the end of February. Now, what you do with them now at this time of year is to remove this dead foliage. So we use a, some long-nosed uh, trimmers. Just cut out these old dead leaves. You're basically tidying the plants up. As I said, I've got to say it again, this is quite normal. Don't panic if the plants are doing this. It's not dying. Well, the foliage is dying back, but it will all return in the spring. There's a flower stalk there. So you can see we're just making the plant nice and tidy. Any of the dead ones, remove them. And I like to leave anything that's green and turgid. I mean... This is an all red form and it's a bit trickier to see which ones are alive and which ones are traps because they're, they're so dark at this time of year. Oh, that's tidied up, that's quite good. This one here's a B52, quite a large one. Do the same with that. Just cut the dead bits off. If you haven't got too many, it doesn't take long at all. If you've got as many as we have, it takes ages. <laughs> Right, so that looks a lot better already. Okay, so those two have been tidied up, these haven't. So you don't really want to overwinter them like this. So the reason we cut the plants back is because if you leave all this dead foliage on the plant, it's very easy to get a problem called botrytis, or grey mould. And I can see that some of our plants here have got it. I was going to say luckily, but it's not a good thing really, but it's lucky for you because I can show you what it is. You see this fluffy grey stuff on here? This is Botrytis, grey mould. Right? There's another one here which is quite bad. Can you see? I don't know if you can see it on the camera. That's like long hairs which are a bit fluffy. And this is a problem because it starts off on the dead foliage, which is fine, but it can move into the live material and it can kill the plant. So that's why we remove all the dead foliage, so a plant like this really needs to be cleaned up really well. You can see there's so much dead foliage on the plant. Tidy it right up as much as possible. I better not do too much of this because you can see what I'm doing really. And we'll move on to the next stage of what to do with them. So, yeah. I mean, it could do with a bit more trimming than that. But basically, once you get them like these two, what do you do with them? So, if you've got them indoors, move them out of uh, the kitchen or bathroom or wherever you've got them growing in your window. Get a tray or a saucer, and we love to use this. This is great. This is capillary matting. We do sell it on the website. It's, uh, it's smooth on one side with plastic backing. And it's got this fluffy top, like a carpet underlay, really. Pop that into a tray or a saucer and keep it just damp. So I add a little bit of water for any of our trays. Just soak it a bit. It's damp and it's starting to soak the water up now. Now why do we use this? The reason we use this is because if you're just using the plastic tray, the plants are either wet or dry. So they're either standing in water or they're bone dry in just a plastic tray. With this, it soaks water up and it keeps the plants just damp. So if we pop them on here, 
We're in contact with the capillary map. That's perfect for the winter months. So plants are just damp and they're just right to be overwintered. Now what we would do with them then is move them out from indoors into an unheated greenhouse, a cold frame, a porch, somewhere where they can get some really cold weather. They will take a frost. Um, in here we don't have to do much at all. If you're growing them in an unheated greenhouse, you can leave them where they are and just cut the dead foliage back and keep them damp. So that is how I would leave them for the winter months. Um, you do need to come back to them. In another month or so, some of these green turgid leaves will start to go black as well, especially once we get some frosty nights. And again, you go around trimming off any more dead leaves, keeping them tidy. What would happen if you left them indoors? What happens when you leave them indoors, they carry on growing, they don't have a rest, and when the spring comes round, you find that they're really tired out and they try to put growth on and it does upset them quite a bit. Also, you'll find they'll try and put flowers up in the winter, which uses a lot of energy up of the plants. And for the longest you can keep them indoors is about four years. But if you want strong, healthy plants, you want to pop them out for the winter, so I say around about now, October to end of November, and bring them back in probably towards the end of February. And that's the regime if you're going to grow them indoors as a house plant. If you're growing them in an unheated greenhouse, you can leave them where they are, but pop them on the capillary mat for the winter, keeping the plants just damp. And also, by keeping them just damp, you will reduce the risk of that botrytis we looked at earlier. Well, I hope that's been helpful. I hope I haven't missed anything out. Um, and good luck with overwintering your Venus flytraps. Oh, I will add another thing. This is quite a good tip. I have found, unlike a lot of carnivorous plants, I find Venus flytraps do benefit from being repotted annually. And the time to repot them is just as they're coming back into growth again, probably about the beginning of March. That's a great time to repot them. And we use our COM one for this again, available on the website. So I hope that's been helpful. And uh, that's all for today. Thanks. <laughs>